Medical school, so I don't know how many of you, if you're, if you're a medic, can you put your hand up as well, keep your hand up? Yes, yeah, still a few of you. I mean, you know, seven years you're going to be studying and, you know, our lives are going to be in your hands. Please tell me what's behind the door. I'm scared now. Well, I'm not really, but, you know. I mean, I can't expect you to know. I, if someone actually worked here and, do you know what's behind the door? Really? Air. <laughs> yeah. Could be a vacuum. Yeah. You never know. That could be a wormhole to another dimension, my friend. <laughs> right? It could be. It could be Stargate right there. I mean, no. I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. You know that. That's fine. That's good. I mean, you. I mean, to be absolutely fair to you, you can rationalise some things, and you could probably take an educated guess, right? But you don't know, do you? Okay, you don't know for definite, all right? Okay, my, all I'm trying to illustrate is the limit of reason. The limit of reason. And that's quite shocking to think how severely limited reason is. We call this in Islam, ilmul ghaib, the knowledge of the unseen. It is a demonstration of the knowledge of the unseen. There is something unseen, an unseen reality. Now, what if I was to tell you that, well, I know what's behind that door. And what if I was to tell you furthermore, by the way, your life depends upon you believing me within the next 25 minutes. Or in fact, you need to know what's behind that door within the next 25 minutes. Or else it's going to have very severe consequences. Now, if I was somehow able to persuade you that I know what's behind that door. So, for example, I start explaining to you how, in fact, I am the person who regularly cleans this lecture theatre. And what if, on top of that, I was able to give you some evidence that I was the person who regularly cleaned this lecture theater? In fact, what if I was able to take a key and actually insert, not that it has a key, but if I was able to take a key and insert it in the door and show you without opening it, look, I can actually wiggle around the key. You see, it works. I can't open it, but I can show you the key fits. I mean, presumably, I could give you more and more evidence until you'd probably reach the stage where you'd agree that the most rational option for me is to indeed believe that my claim is true. Okay? And this is exactly what we would, or I suppose this is an analogy or a metaphor for the revelation that God, the Creator, has given us. We believe as Muslims that throughout time, God has chosen certain human beings. And these human beings have been chosen to be a vehicle through which and by which people could know more about God and answer these fundamental questions. Why is there suffering on the earth? What is the purpose of life? What is the reason for my existence? Is there something that is going to happen to me after I die? And rather like my analogy, of course, the consequences of believing or not believing are extremely severe. They are indeed very serious. And we believe that God has given these messengers and these prophets signs. Indications through which and by which a rational thinking person could come to feel certain that the claim of those prophets is a true claim. Amongst the things that prophets have been given are books. Those books contain words, guidance, revelation, 
from God, from the Creator, to explain to us these things. And that is, of course, the claim that the Muslim makes, that Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the last messenger, and the Qur'an is the final revelation from the Creator. It has come with some signs, some evidences, some things through which a rational person could examine, could look, could study, and reach certainty that this claim is true. When I say certainty, of course, I don't mean an absolute certainty. You can't reach absolute certainty merely by rationally examining these things. I don't believe any way reason can lead generally to absolute certainty. Okay? And so really, the rest of my lecture today is really to try and explain to you uh, why God tells us, or what God tells us, why the world is the way it is. Why did God make the world in this way? Why is there suffering? Why are there difficulties? Why is there hardship? What is the explanation that the Qur'an gives and that the Prophet Muhammad gave for all of these things? First of all, I want to put everything into perspective. The first perspective I would like to put everything into is that I'm sure most of us would agree that it is really an exaggeration to describe life as suffering. In fact, I was a Buddhist for a couple of years, and one of the reasons, one of the reasons I really felt unconvinced by Buddhism is that the premise of Buddha's philosophy was that life is suffering. And that's a faulty premise. And if your premise is faulty, then what follows on from that is almost definitely going to be faulty. Life is not suffering. In fact, I'm sure most of us would agree that the joy and the happiness that we experience in life is usually much more than the suffering that we experience. And it usually happens, quite fortuitously, that suffering, you know, we have the saying, when it rains it pours. Suffering tends to come in bunches, and that's actually good. Psychologically, it's good. And good things tend to happen to us most of the time. I don't say this is the case with every single person, but to simply portray life as suffering is ridiculous. In fact, most of the time human beings experience an extremely positive relationship with their life. In fact, the Qur'an is full of warnings to human beings not to get carried away with the life of this world, not to be deceived by its pleasures and its joys. Indeed, most human beings are so immersed in the pleasures of life, when someone comes to tell them, hey, you need to know what's behind the door, they say, man, I'm just too busy having a good time to know or even care what's behind the door. In fact, statistically, by the way, most people don't care. They just